Hey everyone, it's me. Woo, woo. Yeah, I don't know. I just need to get it all out there today. So hi, it's me, Johnny Levi, and it's time for another YouTube episode. I'm really excited. It is June, um, and I brought a couple friends here with me to help support me in this one. So Blair, can you come stand on my right? And Jordan, can you come stand on my left? He hates this. All right. Um, so today's YouTube episode is all about pride. It is June and on June 28th, it, the Stonewall Riots were the most um, integral part of the pride journey and the rights of us as LGBTQIA people in the United States of America. So I have these two beautiful friends who have been here with me uh, to participate in these YouTube episodes. Jordan's our videographer and Blair has been a huge support system through this and they are my allies. And so I have them here today while I give myself a makeover and I turn into a drag queen. Um, so I hope you're ready and surprise. Let's go. <laughs> So we're not going to the street? No. Nope. Oh, I need to go down my truck then. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> All right, now that we're up close and personal, this is me before, and this is me after. Obviously, I need to shave my face. I'm a pretty hairy dude from here up, and this artistry means that I have to wipe away all of who I am and then take the paintbrushes that I have and create something new. I hope this goes well. I hope this is entertaining. I hope this is real. I'm gonna share some stuff about my journey as a drag queen and a business owner as Johnny, as Jonathan, as John and as Ariana Toadstool or Paytham or whatever name I want during my drag days, which are very rare. Um, I do get a lot of anxiety when I do this um, and I'll share why as I do it. So I hope you're here to learn. One of the reasons that I don't do drag is because I have to shave my face and it's really annoying. Here we go. Whoa. This sucks. Why do I shave my face before doing drag? Um, I shave my face before doing drag because of the representation of drag queen that I was a part of was very feminine. And um, that's one of the things I struggle with, I'd say the most is knowing that I don't have to be a perfect version of anything in order to do this. It's just more what brings me joy. And um, this is gonna push my creativity today. So let's, let's shave. Cool. All right. I'm clean shaven. I got big thick eyebrows and lots of hair here, so I gotta get rid of some of that. I'm gonna use this and get started. I think I got, this is fine with my mirror. Um, yep, Elmer's glue up in here. So what inspired you to first start doing drag? The year was 2000, I was 19, I had graduated high school, I went on a mission for the Mormon Church to West Virginia, I came out of the closet in West Virginia six months later. Um, it was a very traumatizing and rough time in my life. There's a whole documentary about it called Latter Day Glory that I've created, so you can watch that eventually. Um, my younger self than that, though, loved dance and drama and cheer and gymnastics. And I wasn't afraid to express myself in those ways, but I wasn't allowed to be ex extremely feminine. I was, in fact, 
made fun of for being feminine the majority of my childhood. So doing drag is and was at the time a way for me to get on stage and I learned the rest because I wanted to be on stage. Before we get too deep into this, I should say that when I started drag, it was around 2000 and I was about 19 years old. So things have changed a lot. It is now 2023. I am 41, I am not 19. So the journey has evolved for drag queens all over the world in a beautiful way, as most of you know. And I have refrained from expressing myself this way for many reasons. And so today I get to come out, if you will, to my audience and my friends. Okay, I'm gonna do it. That's not tears, that's just makeup. What do you like about doing drag? I like the artistry involved in the tools that the beauty industry has provided. And I've worked in this modality for 20 years. So to not put it on myself is kind of sad because I do it for others all the time. So I like doing drag because I get to create whatever I want without the limitations somebody else puts on me. Yeah, I think that's why it's a necessity for me to do more often. What I don't like is that it's kind of painful and it takes a long time and I mean, you're really sacrificing a bit of yourself in order to do it. And is it worth it? Yeah, it's, nobody should complain about playing. I don't ever get to put this much stuff in my hair. And it kind of looks cool. I think I look like a little alien. <laughs> you totally do. I think the years that I wasn't doing drag were filled with growth in other aspects, which did allow me to pursue many, many dreams of mine. Um, but I missed that feeling that I had pushed my limits and I missed, oh, I really missed the performance aspect of doing drag. I love being on stage and I shouldn't feel any shame of it. I like performing and I think um, it can be really invigorating and fun. And I missed, yeah, I missed that a lot. So to do it here on Bainbridge Island for 4th of July and Pride is a really exceptional feeling in such a small community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, more. Fully like this is an acceptable part of society's way of existing and um, that's self-harm at that point, and I don't, I don't like that. You don't want to live in that space. No. And so what can we do other than try? And this is an outlet you have to touch others. I think that's really cool. Ooh. Yeah, hopefully it works out. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Honestly, I had totally forgotten about what the current political stuff was going on right now, but it is. It's like a. This is a. I mean, it's been a lot for, you know, and it, it's people's livelihoods and artistry, and they're not out there doing much except for dancing for dollar bills and hanging out, so. Yeah. 
as the country has gotten, well, as the world has gotten more aware of drag queens and the art form, we've seen backlash. The growth has been beautiful though. Yeah, it has. But with change, people who are stuck in their ways, they dig their heels in. Um, generally the first step is to work on the eyebrows, but I'm going to wait on that for a second. Maybe I'll do it now. I don't know. How's it going? How's it going for me and you? Oh, this has been fun to watch. I'm still here, huh? Yeah. All right. What's your favorite part of the makeup to do on yourself? I think the last step when I'm putting my lips on is the coolest part because I could spend like 15 minutes just doing the right lip shape. However, I do save that for last. So for now, let's work up here on these beautiful eyes of mine. I'm gonna do a really cool crimson smoky eyeshadow. How do you come up with the design that you? Okay, so now that I just told you guys about how the lips are my favorite part to do, the favorite part I have of the entire process is closing my eyes and creating an image of my head in my head of what I would look like. So, as you'll see later, I sewed the gown that I'll be wearing. I decided on the hair and the makeup and I have truly used my imagination to create and express the artwork that you're about to see. So let's get started. I'm gonna go in with a beautiful Medium tone, how exciting. You can barely see it, it's beautiful. So did you learn how to put makeup on others first or yourself first? Um, hmm. Let me think about that one. Drag it came after you started doing hair professionally? No, no. before. Ooh. So for my journey, I started doing drag before I was even a makeup artist. Um, my sister, Misty, and then a few of my very close friends from my late teens allowed me to do their makeup a lot. So I did makeup on others first. And those friends, especially Christina and Seneca, allowed me to borrow their clothes and do drag and paint my own face with their makeup. And that was kind of where it all started. Um, I lived in a really small town called Winthrop, Washington. And so we would travel to the next big town and go to raves and parties. And I would just wear my boy hair and some makeup and a t-shirt and some shorts and yeah, go party. <laughs> party. <laughs> yeah. I got the long big eyebrows. Okay. It, yeah. So my eyebrow is here. And the new eyebrow is here. A little bit of work to go into that. I think the part that's difficult is the introspective part where I kind of go back in time across my journey and decide where I, I don't know prevented myself from participating and then getting in my head as to whether or not 
starting again is beneficial. I'm 41 now, and that comes across in even in the queer community as too old to be bothering with this, and that's disappointing. Not that I'm a victim of the queer community deciding, it's my own my own process, you know? I would say that the more defeated parts of me that believed I wasn't right for drag um, don't speak as loudly with negative thought as they used to because there are other parts of me, like the drag queen part, that have begun to speak louder. And I've listened to the parts of me that need to express, and I've allowed it to happen, which brings me more joy. It brings like the little kid version of me on the inside a lot of joy to play with makeup and do my hair. It's been, it is eye-opening that I can be happier by doing the things that make me happy. Simple, really. It doesn't have to be putting on a mask. It can be sewing, it can be um, planting things and playing in nature, and it can be dressing in drag. And society shouldn't be gatekeepers as to whether or not we're allowed to be ourselves. We are. You can't stop that. You are, and I am. The hardest part about this for me is I'll get to this point and then I'm like, what do I do? And is it looking good? And then we'll all be like, oh no, it's not. Which isn't true. So. You just know. because it's not true doesn't mean our mind doesn't say it. <laughs> yeah, that. We love our minds, don't we? <laughs> Great. <laughs> I probably need it. But through conversations I've had with you over these past couple years, it seems like you're working on having a better relationship with the, your mind or responding to the things that it tells you. Yeah. Which is nice. It's helpful. Yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful that it has worked out that way. So when I was sent home from my mission is when I said when I was younger, it's when the religion left me and told me that I wasn't welcome. Um, and so I had an opportunity to either participate in reparative therapy and go see a counselor every week or just come out. And I chose to come out and I disassociated with the religion and um, went on a very slow journey of self-discovery and thankfully I walked away fairly unhurt, you know, but one of the difficulties for me in drag makeup is that it is so stage based and I'm very accustomed to doing makeup for weddings and things that are very lightweight. So putting the effort in to paint my face this heavily feels really kind of crazy and exciting. That's why I like drag. It does challenge all of my skills and it really pushes my boundaries and that's the part that's hard for me when i'm doing hair in a salon when i'm doing makeup on somebody that i know it can push push my boundaries but it doesn't do it like this does this makes things very difficult 
What do you like about it? What's good about pushing your boundaries? I mean, I'm an artist, so to get better is to push myself. And if I'm not pushing myself, am I really growing? I'm not sure about that yet. In this modality, I know I have room for growth, and so I can I can enjoy that process. All right, I gotta blend. Let's blend. Okay. Now to the skin, people. To the skin. First. I didn't make that much of a mess, but you always do the eyeshadow first when it's really heavy, and then you can remove whatever falls on your face before you put your skin on. Cool. Dun, 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 dun. Yep, we're gonna need a lot of this. This is a beard cover and it's orange because a stubble is usually ash gray in tone. So we're putting this on the ash gray to cancel the tone of the beard. This is really where your face changes shape and it has changed in trend so much to see young people contouring um, on a daily basis for their makeup when it was something that at the point when I was doing drag was very rare to see in public. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think drag and most minorities are a very big resource for creativity in the world. And so you do see drag artistry coming to the mainstream in every aspect, which is a beautiful thing. And yes, things are going to get borrowed. And I think that's OK. I feel like we're supposed to share with each other how to be artists or be better artists, right? Like. I would not be a good painter without my dear friend Christina teaching me how to paint when I was young. I don't, that's cute, let's just do that. It's just on the table, I just feel like it'd be fun. <laughs> Whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You heard me. <laughs> that's inspiration that you gain from other people instead of Maybe copying or stealing. You get to get inspired. Yep. The dog says, All right. I think the most impactful thing that you as the audience should know is that anyone that's taking the three hours out of their life to put this much makeup on is doing it because it's a passion and it makes them happy. So for you to take your time, for anyone to take their time to say that it's not appropriate or isn't okay is bewildering to me. Everyone should have the freedom to enjoy and do what they love or something. I'm a preacher.
Okay, let's put hair on. Are you recording? Oh shit, hi. For those of you that know me personally, underneath all of this is the same guy, the same hairstylist, the same family member that you've always loved, but, I get to be and perceive myself however I want to. And this feels really good right now. So, should we put the wig on and the clothes? Yes. And show everybody the final look of my own makeover for myself because I have pride in who I am and in my community. So let's put this makeup to rest and put the costume on. All right, everybody, this is it. This is me in drag in your full fierceness. I made this dress over the past six months. It brought me a lot of joy and it pushed my skills in sewing. You saw me doing hair and makeup today for the last three and a half hours in order to be able to get completely ready. This is time consuming and painful. So those artists that do it, they love it very, very much. This was so important to me because I needed to share my perspective on drag with the world. I needed to do this so that the people that are close to me know more about why I do this. And I needed to do it so that I could find some joy in today. And I did. I was able to paint my face and have some fun and answer some great questions and it brought me a lot of happiness, which is what is important in my life right now. Happy June and happy Pride to my LGBTQ friends, my family, friends, and allies. I am so grateful that I get to come to you authentically, both in real life and through this camera lens, whether I'm in drag or as my Johnny person, whichever way I want to present that day. The amount of support, friendship, and love that I've received over the years has been phenomenal. Um, it's actually a dream come true because little Johnny didn't think that any of this would be welcome at 41 years old. And here I am to show you that you can be whoever you want in whatever form that you want, whenever you want. And you will be loved by those who really deserve you in their lives. So, enjoy Pride. If you liked this episode and you learned a little something, feel free to comment or join my network and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time for another makeover, probably not on myself, 
And again, genuinely thank you for allowing me to be me.